Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can remesh objects when using geometry nodes. Being able to remesh objects is a really handy tool. In standard Blender this is fairly easy, there's a remesh modifier which we can just click on and we can change our voxel size to make it lower to get this much closer to what it should look like. Now, this is really handy because it adds a lot of geometry to our object, which you might need for various reasons. The other reason some people use this, if I just bring in a cube and then bring it, let's say over here and then join it with Control and J, is that it will sort out some of the issues when using joins to bring objects together. Though I would personally recommend against that and suggest you use Booleans, but how you choose to use Blender is entirely your business. But what this is really useful for is adding this additional geometry to this object if we've got something like Engons, so we can't use a subdivision surface. However, if we come over to our second example and have a look at, let's say, doing this with geometry nodes, we have the problem that there is no such thing as a remesh geometry node. We're gonna have to do this in a different way. Now, we're gonna do this in a couple of stages, depending on what you want to do. So we'll do it simply, and then we'll add a slight bit of complexity to this, but it isn't actually particularly hard to do. And geometry nodes is one of those areas where you really might want this additional geometry for a variety of purposes. So what we're going to have to do is a simple trick to try and make Blender think of this in a different way than it is currently looking at it with all of these vertices, edges and faces. So what we're going to do for that is we're just going to drag this out and we're going to do a mesh to volume. So I'm going to bring that in there. Let's get rid of this and join it up so we can see it. And you can see that we end up with this cloudy shape that's in the shape of a monkey. I'm gonna turn this exterior bands down to zero. We don't want that. And we've got some options here on our resolution. I'll come to that in a second. But we want to turn this now back into our mesh. To do that, all we do is a volume to mesh. So we've turned it into a volume and then we turn it back into a mesh. But this new mesh is going to create this using a grid. Or we could change this to a different way of doing it but I quite like the grid method. Now, the thing to really consider here is how you want this to work. At the moment, with the amount, this is going to give us a total voxel amount for this object. So if I put this up, we're gonna get more and more and more voxels because it's working on the total amount. Now, I don't actually find that as useful. Some other people do, so I wanted to mention it in case you want that. I have a tendency to use size, and that's gonna allow me to control this via looking at the voxel size. And I can just bring this down to the point where I'm happy with it. Now you'll notice at this point that it looks quite blocky, I guess is the word, and not particularly smooth. You can fix this with the density. Now there is one annoyance with the density and that is that it only works from, well, just above zero. So if you go any further than that, it's going to disappear, or if it's as low as 0 0.01, and if you go above one, then it doesn't really do anything. So this means at this point, if I just also bring in a cube, and then move it over to a similar position as our other one and Control and J it to join them together that we get this similar outcome. Now there is one other trick that we often like to do with this so I want to cover that as well and that is on our standard monkey using our normal modifiers if I create a duplicate of this and then get rid of that modifier so we've got this one underneath what's quite nice to do if I just hide this is take this and add a shrink wrap modifier to it so if I just go to shrink wrap and then we target our monkey that's underneath, you'll notice that this then gets slightly more accurate with what it's doing. We might have to up our voxel size a little bit. Though it does become a little bit more boxy, though we can fiddle around with our voxel size to do things about that. So we might want to also do this for our geometry node object so that we get things a little bit more accurate. And luckily this is quite easy to do, though once again there isn't a shrink wrap node, but there's basically the same thing. So what we're gonna do is add in a set position node. What that's gonna allow us to do is set the position of all our individual points that have been created by our mesh to volume and then volume to mesh. And you can see if we just offset this, you can offset this in any direction, but that's doing it to everything. What we want to do is set the position of the individual points not by using an offset, but by using a position. So we're gonna tell it to go somewhere. And we're gonna tell it to go to, well, the closest point of the original object. So we need our original object, so let's drag out our geometry. And we're going to use a proximity to target node. So it's going to go towards the closest point. And then we just need to take that position and put it into our position. And then we've got this working. You'll notice if I come to here, on our edge where we've got it joining, that if I take this out, it's a little bit smoother. If I bring it back in, it's a little bit closer to where it originally was. 
So this is useful to have as an option depending on what you want to do. So what I'll often do is set a switch node here to allow me to use my set position either on or off depending on what I want as my end result. So if you want to set that switch up, all we do is let's get rid of those and those. We're going to come over here and then use a switch node. We want this to be the false, so without our switch on, we're going to be using it without our drink wrap. Let's plug that in there. But we want to be able to say, well, if we want our switch on, so that would be true, then we do want to go through this shrink wrap. So if I turn this on, it's shrink wrapped. If I turn it off, it's not. And we can set this really quickly if I bring this over here so we can see it. And I can then rename this switch as shrink wrap. So we can then turn that on and off here. And if we want to, we can bring things in like our voxel size so that we can also see this and control this here as well. As always, I hope you found that useful. If you do want to download this node setup, it's not particularly complicated, but sometimes it just saves a bit of time. This is available on the channel's Patreon, where you also get these videos a week ahead of time and ad free, as well as other great perks. If you found the video useful, please do hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe for more great content. Have a great day, guys.